there is an encounter in Final Fantasy XIV that you just can't do anymore, even if you want to. It's gone, and it's never, ever coming back. is what I'm talking about. Today, I'm going to tell you the story of early Ubu progression and how you will never, ever be able to do that fight the way it was designed and intended, because it is gone from the game for good. Let's go back to summer of 2018 when Ubu first released. This was a time where there were so few hardcore groups that stream progression that I genuinely cannot remember a single person other than Xeno and maybe Mr. Happy. You're about to see some man mode shit. That was showing new phases of the fight consistently. Instead, from the handful of groups at the very cutting edge, you would see these grainy, half-covered up Twitter clips pop up from time to time, giving you a tantalizing idea of what was to come. Damn. Is that Ultima's right thigh? Ultima legs confirmed? Groups were progressing through the three primals at a rapid pace on the first and second day. Garuda had one or two mechanics that were stumbling blocks, especially the second plumes and tethers mechanic that was baiting out tank involves very early in prog consistently, leaving them dry going into Ifrit. One major thing that was unsolved, but didn't seem to be a problem yet, was that friction stacks had no duration. They stayed on the affected players permanently, even through death. Why? There had to be a reason. Nonetheless, groups surged through. Ifrit came and went, barely stopping groups aside from the wall which was nails and their relation to dashes. Four nails would spawn in the arena, and the order in which you killed them would correlate to the order in which the Ifrit clones would dash later in the phase, and you wanted to create yourself a safe pattern because the Ifrit check was just tight enough on release that you couldn't really afford a death a lot of the time. One funny little unrelated anecdote that I have to put in here is that my current group world prog this fight and placed pretty well. This was before I was in it mine, so maybe they're better without me. They said that they had no idea how to determine which order the dashes would happen, and they never noticed the correlation between nails and dashes. They just reacted every single pull until they cleared, and that's so funny to me. Then came Titan, which honestly was a complete joke. He just did some landslides, he dropped some jails, which could easily be destroyed by a bomb in the back. Comparing to the unending coil of Bahamut that released merely two patches before this, and was infamous for changing the raiding landscape forever. This encounter thus far felt so, so much easier. The three primals hadn't been a cakewalk, but aside from one or two pain points, they had been felled fairly quickly. And within a day or two of progression, the very first groups found themselves in a brand new phase. Ultima sound motifs filled the air. Magitek bits spawned around the arena, and it was obvious that a caster LB3 was needed to progress. This was no problem. Just execute the prior phases cleanly, and this mechanic, too, felt like those before. But now there was a problem. Every player was debuffed with an uncleansable doom, stunned for a few seconds, and then just given a handful of seconds to remove it. Would healing to full work? Nope. Back to the drawing board. We're missing something. This isn't right, they'd cry. Wait. Why were the first three phases that we've spent 16 hours on at this point so... so easy? Why did our strats just work? This doesn't make sense. Wait a second. Sometimes the boss has got these weird stacking buffs, seemingly at random. It's called etherically charged, which either sounds like a really good thing or a really bad thing. There's got to be some connection. It's not like the wacky wavy inflatable boss just gets stacks when they're feeling a little goofy, is it? Players got to testing. Every single phase needed to be reprogged from scratch. This time focusing on figuring out which interactions would give the primal stacks, 
and what those stacks would do in the first place. Different groups were even working on different mechanics rather than just doing it in chronological order in order to split their efforts. Information would feed from one stream group to another and even to the off stream groups regardless, so there was a lot of ground to be gained from just letting someone else solve the problem that you can't. It was found out that you needed to gain 4 stacks in order to wake a primal, which would make them drop a little collectible puddle upon defeat. Awakening a primal came with a risk reward system built in because their mechanics became harder as a direct result of waking them, but the puddle was a requirement to continue the overall encounter past transition because it gave you a buff which regenerated your limit break gauge after use. 3 primals, 3 buffs, that means 4 usable LB3s. This was the goal. One by one, from all corners of the globe, solutions poured in. Inadvertently, it became a community effort. For Garuda, obtaining two friction stacks on a player and then feeding it to the orb spawned by the spiny plume or by soaking a Mesa high tether with two stacks will give Garuda one stack towards waking. You do this four times and you win. Because her Mesa high tether mechanic happened so late into the phase as well, groups quickly developed strategies around completing her awakening there at the end of the phase in order to skip the bonus mechanics that she would gain. For Ifrit, hitting one of its nails with an eruption would grow it. Growing each nail twice would make it bloom to full size like a gross murderous flower on monster energy. Destroy the engorged nail and Ifrit gets one of four stacks towards waking. Grab four, kill boss, and move on to Titan. This is where things get a little bit more complex. The previous awakenings were fairly simple to pull off and the resulting additional mechanics one note on the whole. For example, if its stack did a lot more damage and applies a dot with the duration relative to the number of people in the stack when woken, for example, and while he's asleep, he, he just kind of looks at you funny and pokes a guy, it doesn't really do much damage or anything scary. If you remember, I called Titan a joke earlier. Well, turns out he was just biding his time all along because his woken mechanic was by far the trickiest in the entire fight so far, and it's a mechanic that to this day, Party Finder opts to use the dreaded third party tools to overcome. Well, I'm talking of course about jails. Before you could just throw them at the back to explode them and move on, but if you wanted to wake Titan, you needed to have him stand in the puddles left over from the jail explosions to collect stacks over time. Because those puddles had a limited duration and Titan was locked in place, the only way to do so was creating a daisy chain of jail explosions from the back of the room all the way over to him. This was a significant speed bump to many groups, but over time people started developing consistent priorities and breaking through. Consistency was key, and once you woke all three primals cleanly in a single pull, it was time to put up a wall. Bits destroyed. Doom cleansed. La Habrea punched in the face. Tank LB used. Now, it was time for Ultima. Oh! Oh shit! Oh! Oh! He's fucking executing them! Three major mechanics stood between our raiders and victory predation. Annihilation and Suppression. Predation came first, and when you look at a diagram of what's actually happening when Predation goes off, it's a bit like a multi-car pileup. It's just a huge mess of AoEs and shifting safe spots and it's absolutely confusing and overwhelming to deal with. Ifrit is dashing, and then his delayed cross dash from earlier in the fight follows, Titan is hitting his landslides, Ultima does a circular AoE around him, and Garuda spawns near the middle and does a circular AoE followed by a massive donut. And the kicker is that this practically all goes off at the exact same time. The strat that I think is probably intended is that you dodge into Garuda and then into the safe quadrant around it, but nobody really did that after the first week because the glorious fourth rune strat was discovered. Why learn the mechanic when you can just stand at the wall, dodge to a very obvious and telegraph secondary safe spot, and even pop a bunch of mitigation and ignore the second step if you want. The first wall fell quickly. Next came Annihilation, 
which had weight of the land AoEs, the reintroduction of Mezahai tethers all the way back from the start of the encounter, Ifrit dashes, Titan landslides, Garuda AoEs, searing wind on the healers, and on top of all of that, Titan would pulse four orbs, one after another, which needed to be soaked by the tanks or they would float towards players and explode for huge damage. To deal with the tethers, those friction stacks that I mentioned way back in the video, those come into play now. In order to be able to safely soak them, you need to carry over a stack of friction on a player throughout the entire fight up until this point and then use them to safely take the tether and its resulting explosion away from the group. This happens twice during the mechanic. For everything else, players found a few possible working solutions and kept on progging. Before we move on though, I want you to look at this little chain from the orb. Surely it's not going to be important later, right? Then came the third of the big trio mechanics, suppression. Suppression was a garbled mess of despair, with Supana and Charada returning with Mistral songs that needed to be blocked, eruptions, titan jails, feather lances pulsing around the edge of the room, landslides, Ifrit AoEs, Garuda AoEs, light pillar, green marks, red marks, a number 43 with extra cheese. Ah shit, here we go again. Everything was there, and it all needed to be dealt with at the exact same time. And the Final Fantasy community dealt with it in the only way the Final Fantasy XIV community knows how. Mario Kart. Some groups solve the mechanic with like, an actual strat, but where's the fun in this when you could play Russian Roulette with your static, and there are a million guns? In time though, just like those before, suppression was passed and groups found a new wall that may surprise you. Etheric Boom. You know the orbs in the level 50 Ultima Duty? Where two orbs float towards one another and you need to pop them before they meet or bad things happen? Well this is the exact same mechanic, except there are four sets all at the same time. They do a metric gigaton of damage, and for some reason they explode almost immediately. People were stumped. Sure, you could split the raid into four groups of two and take all four at once, but the damage was completely unsurvivable. You couldn't use tank LP either. What were you supposed to do? Brains were racked, pulls were burnt to test and test again, and no solution was reached. The key was this little guy right here. This chain connecting the two orbs. What colour is it? What colour was the chain in Annihilation that linked to the boss when you popped an orb? Wait. That was it. Every person that soaked one of the Annihilation Orbs would create additional chains that Ultima would soak, lengthening the overall chain of that orb later in Etheric Boom. But there was an element of risk reward attached to it, because every person that soaks that Annihilation Orb adds to Ultima's Enrage Meter, so you can't really just have the whole raid soak the orbs, so you need to decide. Do we give ourselves a safer, easier time in Etheric Boom, or do we have a longer fight in Rage Timer? Groups made their choice, and the mechanic was resolved. The last hurdle was Primal Roulette. Three simple mechanics followed by three raid split damages and massive raid whites in a random order, and then came in Rage. At this point, whoever performed best would kill first, and the group that stood triumphant Entra Carbuncle, followed the next day by two different Elysium groups from North America, and then the group that I'm in now but wasn't in then snuck out a fourth place finish the following day. I cleared like week six or seven or something, I don't know, I only did evenings for this, so I didn't get to experience this fight blind, and I'm kind of salty about it. Ultima Weapon Ultimate was designed specifically to be different from UCOB and also from those that came after it. One major complaint from UCOB was that, at the time, it was a 19 minute fight and that was considered overwhelming and people would argue unfun to prog. So the battle design team came up with a solution. Instead of such a long fight, why don't they make a 15 to 16 minute fight, but make it so that people that aren't using guides need to prog it twice? That's the point of the waking mechanic. If you use a guide, this is a very straightforward four phase fight that you prog and then you kill, and it is a lot shorter than other ultimates. But if you are blind, you have to progress through alternative versions of each of the three primals, 
then go back and redo them with the knowledge that you gain from the transition. In terms of the story that tells, I really love it. Nowadays, unless you can somehow avoid ever hearing anything about the encounter, and you can find seven other people in the same boat as you that are willing to commit the time and effort to a blind prog, you can never, ever get that experience. One thing I've rambled about on stream dozens of times at this point is the fact that raid content has somewhat of a time and place experience to them. Whilst you can and you should prog them whenever, and I totally agree that the best time to dip your toes into ultimate encounters is whenever you have the time and the motivation, I think it's often forgotten that the fights degrade and lose some of their essence over time. If you're a little newer to the game, or to raiding, you might not know exactly what I mean by this, so let's explore it a little before we talk specifically about Uru. When a new expansion releases, it always comes with a plethora of job changes and deeper system and battle changes across the board. Because of the nature of live service games in general, and especially Square Enix's design philosophy when it comes to FF14, those changes never result in an overall weakening in power, but a strengthening. The player pretty much always becomes stronger relative to the things they have previously faced. And since Uwu, every single job has received massive buffs to their damage at level 70. Tanks naturally have 20% more defense as passive. Players have more HP, more defense, more magic defense, better food and potions, naturally more stats due to their gear sinking rather than being current and unsynced, stronger abilities, new weapons, new jobs, easier rotations than before, and I'm not even covering everything here. Uwu was originally a fight where more than one death in a phase spelt instant disaster for your group, whereas now you can afford 10 plus deaths in the fight with no problem at all, and that is in no small part due to the scaling. Yukov, and to a lesser extent T, also suffer from this. They are still really fun fights, and I still recommend you do them, but now that the checks have lessened, the tightness that gets the blood pumping has reduced, and a lot of mechanics can be skipped or cheesed. The fights are still fun, rewarding, and worth experiencing. But something is missing. Let's look at Uwu today. Speedy groups need to hold DPS in order to gain that fourth stack to awakening on Garuda, because it's all too easy to accidentally skip the plumes mechanic entirely, which results in a wipe. Onto Ifrit. And the nail kill order? Honestly, it doesn't really matter, because you're probably going to skip the dash mechanic later in the phase anyway. Titan is mostly still intact, broad strokes wise at least, and funnily enough I think that is why it is the most fun phase of the fight to do today, to me at least. I wonder if those two things have anything in common. In these three phases, you avoid letting your DPS use any mitigation on the boss, because due to all the skips and reduced damage, there is a real chance you won't have LB3 for the transition to Ultima. On Ultima, most party finders cheese limit break either at the start of the encounter or from soaking the predation if it dash, or both, because once again, getting that necessary LB3 for the Ultima raid wide after suppression is not guaranteed at all. You skip an entire phase of the fight after Annihilation, because the boss phase is at 49.9%, and like you can see here, you can have ultimate in the 30s at this point if your group is relatively clean. Because the damage check is a non-issue, you can then easily tank LB1 Etheric Boom, giving you so much more leniency on the mitigation front. And then you finish the fight and win. I love doing Uru. Even to this day, I think it's a fun fight and I regularly join clear PFs just to get to do it again. But I kind of wish I could do 2018 Uru once more. We didn't know how good we had it. What this will mean for DSR and top going into Dawn Trail is anyone's guess, but if you want my two cents, it's that if you want to get the experience of doing them, now is the best time. We have a large lull period before next expansion, and these encounters will probably degrade, just like their predecessors. So try and get a taste of them while they're still exactly how the developers intended. If not, they'll still be here next expansion. Just a little bit easier. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know in the comments section by doing all that YouTube stuff. I've been thinking about making more and even deeper dives into other ultimates and maybe even savages and their progressions in the future, but I'm probably only going to do it if there's interest. So the question I have for you today is this, do you think there's a solution to this? Is it even a problem? Does it even need to have a solution? I'd love to hear your thoughts.
because I think it's a pretty nuanced topic that honestly deserves its own video in the future potentially. I'll be back next week with another video and I hope you all have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day. Have a good one.